Hi everybody, it's Franny and welcome to another episode in our little 1964 Porsche 356 C series. Today is going to be electrical work. So we're going to do a complete electrical tune up on the car. We're going to replace spark plugs, we're going to replace the rotor, rotor cap, and then all the wires as well. Get the engine up and running and we're going to head and time the engine. I think it's going to be super fun. Electrical tune-up and a little 356 is pretty straightforward. I'm going to be replacing the spark plugs with these NKG Iridium plugs. I really like these plugs. I think they work really well in the engines. Uh, we have our new rotor cap here, just kind of standard rotor cap, and our new rotor as well. Now this guy here is actually an oil sender unit. I think it's weeping on this car. I've noticed a bunch of oil around the top of it, so that's kind of a common failure. So we'll go ahead and swap that guy out as well. And these are our spark spark plug wires. These are brews. As far as tools go, this is really one of my favorites. This is a spark plug socket here, but it has a universal joint built into the back of it. These things are great and perfect for getting in those kind of nooks and crannies to get down in the tin and get to the spark plugs. And then just sort of my standard uh, just, oh, I love this guy. This guy, expandy collapsy guy, it's perfect for working in small areas like that. And since this car does have electronic points, it does make it a little weird to set the timing on it, but I'm gonna be using this Xenon timing light. And the best thing about it is that it's adjustable. You can rotate the little wheel back here and change the advance on the light. And so I think this is gonna be really helpful to set our maximum advance at RPM. In addition to that, I do have an old analog meter. I want to go back and once we do set it with the timing light, I like to go back and check it with the little manual meter here. And the reason is that next time, you'll know you can time it at whatever it should be statically and know that you'll get the right advance. It just, it's kind of just sets a baseline with the timing light and then we can use this in the future. In removing our spark plugs, it's not really important which one you start with, just that you keep track of which one is which because they make great diagnostic tools. We can tell quite a bit about what's going on in that particular cylinder. So let me start with number one, it's forward right cylinder here and I'll pull that plug out. Oh, I think we got it. Good, they weren't very tight. All right, well, here's our first victim here. Take a look at this guy. See if you can kind of see in there. It looks a little bit wet to me. Not super duper clean. I mean, the center electrode is really what you want to look at because you know that should be white. The rest of it's always hard to tell color wise because it's metal and you never know what it really was. I mean, silvery, but whatever. So it, it looks okay from the color wise, but it's just, it's a little bit wetter than I would like. Yeah, and it smells, now this car had kind of crummy gas in it. Ugh, it definitely smells a little varnishy. So that might be why we're seeing a wet plug. Other than that, I don't see any damage to the plug at all. It looks great. All right, let's put this down. We'll mark it as number one and we'll move on. We can go ahead and reinstall our new spark plug at this point. I know Porsche put out a notice about using anti-seize and they say that it's a bad thing because it messes with the conductivity of the spark plug itself, but these engines specifically, and even the 3.2 Carreras, the same sort of thing, they have a tendency to kind of lock the plugs in if you don't put something on them. So I am gonna use a little bit of anti-seize and I'm just gonna use a teeniest little kiss of it on the spark plug. So it's just a little idiot's bit here, just, just a kiss. No more than that. Because what we're just trying to do is keep these threads nice and lubricated over time so that they just come out easier. Something else about doing spark plugs on your car, you should make sure that the engine is cold. And it kind of makes sense because if the head's good and hot, it's going to clamp down on the spark plug. And, it, and when you go to wrench that guy out, you can gall the threads pretty bad on the head itself. So we don't want to do that. So it's best to do it when the engine is as cool as possible. They kind of go in and go down a little bit. Always make sure you put in spark plugs hand tight first as well. You never want to just throw the wrench on them and start going crazy. 
put them in by hand until they seat and you can't go any further. When you insert the spark plugs, you really do not want to over tighten them. They're pretty easy to strip out. So on the box here, they talk about seating the plug down and then going maybe another half to two thirds, something like that. So I think the best way to do that sort of thing is to use a teeny weeny little ratchet. It's very hard to over torque something with this little guy. So I really like this and it also works really well in close tight quarters. All right, so that's seated and we're going to come up. I'm not going to go much more than that actually. All right. The whole idea is that you crush this little washer completely so that it, it just forms a good seal. That's all they're looking for. The rest of the plugs are just the same procedure. I'm going to continue and do two, three, and four. So how do all the plugs look? Looking at cylinder number one, it's a little yellow. Doesn't look like it's burning completely. Two looks pretty good though. Looking at the other side, three and four, three has definitely got a problem. And four is pretty good, but not perfect. All right, and with that, that's our spark plugs done. Next, let's tackle our spark plug wires. Now, it's important to kind of take a look at these guys. They're all kind of different lengths. Actually, two of them are pretty much the same length. And then the other two are, one of them's a little bit longer than the other. So the longest one is going to be cylinder number one, then number two. And then these other shorter guys are gonna be three and four. It looks like they're pretty much exactly the same length. So it's not really gonna matter much for those. But if one of them is a little bit longer, that would be cylinder number three. And here in the car, since we're gonna be replacing the distributor cap and rotor, let's go ahead and pop this off. Now remember, this is cylinder number one here, and you just count counterclockwise. One, two, three, and four. Now the inside of this rotor cap has seen better days. It looks pretty bad in there, actually. It's kind of crunchy. The center electrode in here is not doing so great either, and it's left a bunch of smuts here on top of the rotor. So take a look at the top of the rotor. It's all dirty and... This can sometimes cause, cause arcing if there's enough of this. This is basically just graphite. Let's go ahead and replace these bits. So our new rotor, nice clean rotor, it's gonna go on here just like that. We wanna check our advance mechanism. Spin it this way, it should snap back nicely. Snap, 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 snap. We can see our electronic points down here as well. So we don't have points to do and we don't have a condenser to do. We want to fit our top without anything on it because we want to know exactly where it goes. Well, which direction does it go? Meh, 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 spinning it around. It needs to seat on here in only one way. And that's it. It won't go 180 degrees out. It just won't, it won't seat. See that? And that's because there's a tab right here that makes sure that this thing gets indexed. And there's a hole in the rotor right here that meets up with this tab. All right, great. So with that on like that, we can go ahead and snap this guy on. That way we don't get confused. And then one at a time, we're gonna take our spark plug wire and plug it in and route that wire out. Starting with the longest one, this is cylinder number one, and it gets plugged in right here. Now it's nice that they left these covers all the way up. So when you push this down, you'll know if it seats all the way or not. So that's not in there all the way. That's not either. That is, and then you can just put, push the booty down the rest of the way. All right, our wire kind of snakes back here behind the generator pedestal. So we'll route it back around here, put it through our little holder here. There we go. And fit it on top of the spark plug and push it in until you hear the click. All right, so we just fit it over the hole. All right, and to just pop in. There it goes. It just sort of pops in.
with all four of our spark plug wires in, we only have one more wire to go, and that's our coil wire. So let's go ahead and put that in. Same deal, we want to see it, the metal disappear. There we go. Push our little rubber booty all the way up. And then finally here, same deal here. And see, that's not in all the way. So we want to continue down until we don't see that metal. All right, there we go. Now we can put our little rubber booty over. Well, you can see I'm kind of losing my light. It's getting a little bit late. I'm gonna to have to pick this up tomorrow, but we've got our spark plugs in and our spark plug wires. I still have my little oil sender sensory guy to put in and we still have to tune the car. We're picking up a couple of days later. The first thing I wanna to do to get started is to replace our oil sender. I believe the one that's on the car is leaking and it's kind of common for these to leak around this seal here with a plastic meets the, you know, this metal part, the base, and they kind of weep oil. It looks like this one's doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and swap this guy out. Should be super fast. You just kind of pull it out, put the new one in, and then we're gonna get on to the timing. Our oil sender is right back here behind the distributor and what this green wire is hooked to. So I'm gonna pull the distributor cap off just to kind of get it out of the way. I think that's gonna give us a little better access. All right. Still, it's a little bit difficult to get to and it's 24 millimeters. So I'm gonna use my 24 millimeter crow's foot here and loosen that guy up. All right. It's even loose, look at that. It's, it's even loose itself. Let's go ahead and loosen it up the rest of the way. Take the wire off, of course. And there we go. I'm not even seeing a washer on this at all. So that's probably bad. That would be another reason. See, no washer at all. They had put some sealant on it, it looks like, but I don't think that worked either. And then the top of it, look how greasy the top of it is. So that's what makes me think that it's leaking around the top as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit so we can get a nice good seal on this. I'm wondering about this guy. I'm wondering if it's tight. I should double check that, just to make sure it's tight. Cause it looks like this whole unit has spun a little bit. Straighten this out. Yeah, see? All right. Oh, well, there should be a copper washer, and there is. Good, that's a good thing. Okay, and there should be a copper washer at the base here as well. And there is. Clean this guy up a bit here. There we go. The bottom of it as well, because it's a ceiling surface underneath there. And then clean this underneath here. That's our washer. You can kind of see it looks like it's been just crushed on and crushed on a couple of times. I don't have a lot of faith that that's actually not going to leak. So we're going to replace that. One underneath here, it doesn't look too bad, but we'll see if we can find one. We'll go ahead and replace this one as well. I have a couple new copper washers. Let's see if we can get this thing to seat properly. There we go. That looks pretty good. This guy over the top. There we go, and then another one over the top of this, and then this guy over the top here. All right, kind of hoping we get this guy to seat and lock in well. Let's see. All right, I think that's pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. Nice and solid, hopefully we won't have any leaks. Okay, well we have our new sensor and a new washer to go with it. This is what was missing before was the washer. So let's go ahead and install this guy on the top. All right, we'll use our crow's foot to hook that back down again. Okay, we'll hold on to the base here, great. It doesn't need to be super duper tight, just tight enough to not leak pretty much. Okay, there we go. Test fit our new wire. It was loose on the last one, so we might have to lock it down a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty loose. Let's go ahead and clamp this a little bit. There we go, just a little bit. There we go. That's much better. 
All right, with our oil sender in and the little junction piece underneath it reset with new washers, I think we're good there. So let's get on to the actual timing of the engine. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna do it statically first and see where it is. And then I think we'll probably have to adjust it. We can go ahead and adjust it. And then we're gonna start the engine, spool it up, and we're gonna check it dynamically as well. So these cars should be five degrees before top dead center, static, so with the engine not running. And then once the engine's up to about 3,000 RPM or so, it should be somewhere between 32 and 36, depending on how the distributor is set up. That's for the original cast iron distributor, which is what this has. But there's one other little surprise on this car, and it actually has electronic points, which can mean that it can make it a little bit weird to set the timing statically, but once you know where it should be, you can set it statically in the future. I've got my meter here hooked up. It's just hooked to the negative wire on the coil and then also to a ground is really all it's hooked to and all we're using it for right now is just a voltmeter so the idea is what we want to do is rotate the engine forward until we see our meter go up and that will tell us that the points have closed these electronic points have closed so we want to then look at our timing mark and see where we are so okay so let's go ahead and run the engine a little bit forward and see where we are all right, we just sort of creep up on it here, watching our meter. There it goes, click. Okay, with that meter on, we know that our points are closed, so what is our timing at this point? Well, looking down here, we can see our top dead center timing mark here is lining up just about with the notch here. It's really close. So these cars really need to be about five degrees before top dead center, not top dead center. Let me go ahead and adjust this. I've put a mark on our pulley here for five degrees before top dead center, which is about a quarter inch. If you're wondering about how far that is on the pulley, it's about a quarter inch to the right. So let's readjust our distributor and make sure that it comes on for our five degree mark. To adjust our distributor, we just wanna loosen up the clamp that's down here. There we go. And I find one of the easiest ways to do this is actually to back the engine up a little bit. That takes any play out of the gears and such in there. And then rotate forward and line up where we want it to be, our five degree before top dead center mark with the mark in the generator stand. Okay, that's right about there. Then just twist the distributor until our meter comes on. There we go. So we're moving our distributor counterclockwise from the top. All right, now our meter is on. We're at the right spot on the pulley here. Let's back it up and just double check it. Okay. Watching our meter there. There it goes, click. All right, at the five degree before top dead center mark. That's perfect. All right, so let's just lock down our distributor at this point. At this point, we can replace our distributor cap. Our next step will be to check it dynamically. Now I need to start the car and warm it up a little bit first and I need to kind of get my stuff all set up. So let me get that done. Let me run you through our connections for our timing light. Starting with this. Now the timing light is a 12 volt timing light, but our car is six volts. So I'm using a 12 volt battery just to power the timing light. And you'll see a little green wire going up there as well. That is just a voltage reference or a ground reference. I've just got it tied off there on top of the generator. Our other connection for our timing light is the sensor here, and it goes on spark plug number one. You just sort of open it here, and you'll see there's an arrow on there that points towards the direction of the spark plug. So we're gonna clip it on our, our number one spark plug line here. It's the one going to the forward right cylinder there. We'll leave it back there. We can just plug our plug into the bottom of the timing gun and we're all set. Okay, well let's go ahead and warm up the car a little bit so we've got a nice steady idle. All right, we've got a nice steady idle. Let's go ahead and check our timing. All right, we can see that our static timing is right where it should be because at idle, we're at that same five degrees before top dead center. That's a great sign. 
Now next what we want to do is roll the engine up to about 3,000 RPM. That should get it past its maximum advancement and see where we are. Okay, that's showing a tad past 32 degrees, which is fine. We can be up to maybe 35 or almost 36 degrees. So I'm gonna use this, this cool Oneto adjustable bit on my timing light here, this little uh, wheel on the back here, and I'm gonna set it to whatever it needs to be at 3000 RPM to get our zero degree advancement, our top dead center mark to be lined up with the mark on the generator pe uh, pedestal. Now that sounds kind of weird and complicated, but we're just using the timing light to compensate. So hopefully that'll give us an exact reading of what our advancement is. I'm gonna set to 35 and see if that's about it. All right, I think we're still showing a, just a tad bit of advancement, even at, uh, with a compensated for about 35 degrees. So let's see, we'll push it up to about 37 and see if that's where it is. We're somewhere around 37 degrees, 36, 37 degrees, and I think that's fine. It's just a little bit hot, maybe, but not much at all. We're certainly nowhere near 40, so I think we're fine with this. And that little bit in the bottom end, that little five degrees in the bottom end is gonna give us a little bit of uh, pickup as well. So I think we're set with this. Let me go ahead and turn the engine off. Well, that's it for the electrical tune-up on the car. We replaced our spark plugs, our spark plug wires, our distributor cap and rotor, and then we've gone ahead and timed the engine as well. And yes, it was a little bit behind there, huh? So it really shouldn't be timed at top dead center statically. It really should be closer to about five degrees advance. I think we're good. The engine sounds like it's running really well and seems happy enough. I will take the car out for a little tootle just to be certain, but I think we're good here. From here, we're gonna be moving on to the carburetors. Now, um, I have a little confession at this point. I've already done the carburetors. I went back and redid the tuning again on this just to just because before when I did it, the carburetors were running so poorly, I couldn't really even get the car timed properly. So, um, so it's a little bit of back and forth sometimes. The next video in this series will be the complete rebuild of these two Zenith carburetors. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get right to them. We've got a lot of episodes in this series, so I hope you're enjoying it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that now and then hit the little bell next to it to be notified next time we upload a video. Because even when we get done with this car, we still have the 3.2 Carrera to go and I've got stuff to do on the i8 and the 993, all sorts of stuff. We got lots of content coming up. So, all right. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. All right, well, until next time, safe travels. Bye.